Hello everyone, with me for TVS News, and these are the headlines. Police thwarts attempt to smuggle illegal immigrants using luxury vehicle. Health Director General said Malaysia against all forms of organ trafficking. Upgrading works of Jala Padawan to be completed by the third quarter of 2020. And now the news. Migrant smugglers have resorted to new means by using luxury vehicle to evade detection by the authorities on their illicit activities. However, the modus operandi to smuggle undocumented migrants into Sarawak via illegal routes was busted by the police following surveillance and investigations. Police foiled a migrant smuggling attempt of 20 illegal immigrants, including five women from the neighboring country, on board a luxury multipurpose vehicle in an attempt to enter the country through an illegal route at a palm oil estate along Jalan Mongkos. Sarawak Brigade Commander Senior Assistant Commissioner Mancha Atta said four local men believed to be agents of the syndicate were also detained during the 10.45 p.m. incident by the General Operation Force GOF raiding team. All illegal immigrants were detained under Section 6, Subsection 1, Subsection C of the Immigration Act 1959-1963 for failing to produce valid travelling documentation. While the four locals were held under the Anti-Trafficking in Persons and Anti-Smuggling of Migrants Act and TIPSOM 2007, the police also seized a motorcycle, a luxury multi-purpose vehicle, a mobile phone and keys. Mancha added that a local suspect had offered to bribe the officer in charge of the raiding team worth 2,000 ringgit to avoid legal action. Thereby, the suspect will be investigated under Section 17, Subsection B of the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC Act. Organ traffickers profit in the shadows, which leaves vulnerable donors and first war recipients open to severe exploitation and a lifetime of health consequences. Dr. Norhisham said this in a statement Malaysia is committed to protect the health and safety of every donor and recipient in transplantation. Thus, the Health Ministry strongly condemns and is against any form of organ trafficking or the obtainment of an organ for transplantation via trading. Referring to an article published in The Sun UK dated on August 8, a title Organs for Sale, which alleged a Malaysian was involved in an scrupulous act, Dr. Norhisham says, Malaysia is committed to protecting the health and safety of every donor and recipients in transplantation. He said this commitment is illustrated in the enactment of the Human Tissue Act 1974, which legally controls the removal of an organ for therapeutic purposes. On August 13, the 48-year-old Sorokian, whom allegedly involves in an international organ trafficking syndicate, surrendered himself to the police. The accused has been remanded the following day on August 14 to facilitate investigation under the Anti-Trafficking Persons and Anti-Smuggling of Migrants Act 2007. Chief Minister Dato' Pening Yabang Johari Tun Openg today officiated the Jalan Padawan Upgrade Phase 1 project in Tapa, Syrian. The 34.9 million ringgit project began on September 20th, 2019 and is scheduled to complete by September 11, 2022. Abang Johari said previously the Barisan National Federal Government funded the project, but the project was cancelled by the Pakatan Harapan Government. Therefore, the state government has decided to take over the project for the sake of the local people. Jalan to tiga puluh puluh kita. Kita lancar pasal pertama, jadi JKR Madah mungkin si cukup, terpaksa lah cari lagi tambah sedikit untuk pasal kedua supaya dia siap seluruhnya jalan pedawas. Jalan tu pun berbengkok-bengkok. Jadi JKR Madah dengan saya tadi nyari lain diluruskan ke mana dibuka jalan ya diperbesarkan dan ia akan lebih selamat untuk digunakan jalan padawan tu jadi inilah apa yang kita laksanakan saya apabila saya madah lulus janji saya laksanakan janji saya 
However, the chief minister stressed that the fate of the second phase of the upgrading project would be realized if the Kabogan Party Sarawak GPS remain as the ruling government. Saya sedapat merespon awal sebab kuasa GPS si lama lagi habis. Tapi mun kita beri balik kuasa dengan GPS, jalan tu akan kita laksanakan. Kerana kita tahulah GPS hanya kuasanya tahun baru 2021. Mula jaya tu panjang. Jadi saya si mau pembula. Apabila kita beri kuasa kepada GPS balik, jalan ini akan kita laksanakan. Tinggallah ke Tebeduk. We will implement subject. You give back us the power. Saya janji, saya akan beri tepati janji saya. At the same event, the Chief Minister also announced an allocation of 1.4 million ringgit for the renovation works of the Tapah Chinese National Type Primary School. Jadi, akhirnya saya juga mendapat tahu bahawa pihak sekolah telah memungut lebih kurang 1.4 juta. Saya dah janji dolar tu dolar, saya akan beri tambahan 1.4 juta juga kepada sekolah ini untuk meneruskan pembangunan sekolah tapah di kawasan ini. Jadi tuan Earlier, Dato' Roland Sagawi revealed plans to build a classroom block for the school whereby the current classes are dilapidated and unsafe for students. Dan yang amat berhormat Ketua Menteri kita ini, ini juga orangnya. Sungguh berpurah hati pada masa itu, beliau telah memberi 500,000 untuk sekolah tapah ini di tahun 2012. Dan dia pada masa itu juga ada menyatakan, biarlah pihak sekolah, pihak PIBG dan lembaga penduduk sekolah cari lagi dana. Kita akan beri, kata beliau pada masa itu, uh, one to one, uh, one to one untuk sekolah. Sekolah dipahamkan bahawa sekarang mereka telah mengumpul kurang lebih, satu juta lebih lah. So, I don't know, sir, I appeal to your good university dan lihat apakah yang kerajaan kita dapat beri through your good self. Regarding the renovation on SJKC Tapa, Headmaster Chung Pin Pin revealed that development of the school is expected to begin this December. We have a plan for 2015, because we have a plan for the school. We have a plan for the school. In, uh, kami lembaga dengan PIBG Pimpin ada perancangan dua, buat satu bangunan baru dah empat tingkat. Actually, we have already collected about 1.5 million the, the fund currently, oh, but uh, from the public and and all the from from the jabatan lah. And currently, we still not enough. So we kami bincang melalui uh, YB Datuk Rodan, beliau uh, YB pun rela membantu kami, no? dengan memohon dari pihak CM. Telah diluluskan tadi dibenarkan dan ada tambahan 1.4 million. So dengan duit sebegini ini kami percaya kami pembangunan kami akan dimulakan secepat mungkin. December, end of this year, end of this year. We try to start as soon as possible. One million ringgit additional fund for agriculture facilitation fund. AFF announced by the Ministry of Modernizations of Agriculture, Native Land and Regional Development today will benefit as many as 198 recipients from Serembu through cluster farming and livestock projects. Its Minister Dato Amar Douglas Uga Amba said such program will benefit the rural residents in the form of training and grants. In achieving Sarawak's vision to become a net food exporter by 2030, the ministry would introduce modern agriculture such as structured fertigation, hydroponic, aquaponic, and Internet of Things. Program ini penting untuk kita beritahu rakyat apakah program pertanian yang baru. 
Tadi saya dah nyebut tujuannya adalah jadi net exporter barang makanan tahun 2030. Tapi apabila kita dapat meningkatkan pengeluaran, mananya pendapatan orang nanam nanas, orang nanam uh, buah, orang nanam sayur, orang ternak ikan, orang ternak ayam juga meningkat. Kena kita harap kita dapat tingkatkan pendapatan orang kebun tidak kurang dari 4,000 satu bulan. Jadi kalau kita gunakan teknologi baru, biayanya tidak mustahil. Jadi inilah kita nak beritahu Dr. Bupuan apakah program-program yang dijalankan kementerian uh, supaya kita dapat tentukan rakyat khususnya di luar bandar dapat tingkatkan pendapatan supaya hidup lebih baik, lebih senang. He added, it is the government's goal under the Gabungan Parti Sarawak GPS, led by Chief Minister Datuk Patinggi Abang Johari Tunoping, to uplift the people's living standards. He stressed that such allocation was not merely promises made by the government, where it is evident that a total of 265 million ringgit has been approved for the AFF project this year. The agriculture sector holds the future as Sarawak aims to become a major exporter of food products by 2030. Surumbu Assemblyman Miro Simo said, farmers will benefit from the Agriculture Facilitation Fund AFF project undertaken by the government with allocation channeled for the market expansion and agricultural products development. Jadi sekarang kerjaan sudah ada membantu, duit sudah ada, kepakaran sudah ada, jadi bersama kita merebut peluang yang sudah tersedia luas ini. Ya, itu yang kita mau. Jadi untuk kawasan Dung Serombo di bawah AFF, kita telah menjadikan uh, enam projek. Kita tidak memberi uh, in-kind seperti baja, racun dan sebagainya, karena itu sudah perkara biasa yang dilakukan oleh Jabatan Pertanian puluhan tahun dahulu. Dan kita tidak melihat impactnya kepada masyarakat, impactnya kepada industri pertanian itu sendiri. Jadi kita telah mewujudkan kluster-kluster pertanian berdasarkan komoditi-komoditi tertentu. Tapi itu kita wujudkan enam kluster utama di bawah peruntukan FFF supaya kluster-kluster ini nanti akan menjadi katalis pembangunan pertanian di kawasan Dunsrumbu. The projects include MD2 Pineapple Planting Project in Kampung Kopit, Coffee Planting Project in Tringus, Baby Corn Planting Project in Krokong, Ginger Planting Project in Kampung Gumbang, Cow Breeding Project and Paddy Field Planting Project. Therefore, Mirosimo hopes the participants would be the catalyst for the state's development in the agricultural industry. Assistant Minister of Urban Planning, Land Administration and Environment, KAM, Kuala Rajang Assemblyman, has outlined three main factors as preparation for the upcoming 12th state election. He stressed that the party machine must always be ready and always improving whilst ignoring the opposition's deceitful tactics. In a dialogue session with PBB and 41 Kuala Rajang branch leaders today, Datu Haji Len Talib said the election this time around are very different following the COVID-19 pandemic, and the party now stands on its own with Gabungan Pati Sarawak GPS. He said the supporters must prioritize the party instead of individuals as leaders can be replaced, but the party must remain strong. PBB Kuala Rajang Zone has 12 branches from Sarike, Selalang, Sare, Kerapa o Kerubong, Muara Payang and Bukit Kinyau. The Islamic Cemetery in Sarike will be relocated to a 10 hectare land in Sentabu to be developed soon. Assistant Minister of Urban Planning, Land Administration and Environment Dato Haji Len Talif Saleh said that Chief Minister has approved a 2 million ringgit fund to develop the new bureau grounds. Len Talif said the Chief Minister has previously provided 10 hectares of land to be developed into a new bureau ground for use in the next 50 to 100 years. He said this when speaking at a communal cleaning event at the Sarika Islamic Cemetery today. The COVID-19 situation in Sarawak is now steadily improving. The State Disaster Management Committee, SDMC, has announced the end 
of the Kuching Medical Centre cluster. Assistant Minister of Urban Planning, Land Administration and Environment, Dato Haji Lentali. With the end of the aforementioned cluster, there are now eight active clusters. Meanwhile, today also saw no new virus cases reported. The total number of virus cases in Sarawak remains at 682. Moving on to sports updates. The Sarawak State Sports Council, MSNS, is now in talks to organise several friendlies for the state's Sukma football teams. According to its director, Dr. Ong Kong Sui, this includes playing against teams from West Kalimantan and Sabah. However, he said any decision would depend on the current COVID-19 situation. In other words, if it is not completely safe, the games would not be held. Sarawak has previously won the gold medal for football in Sukma, Sarawak, 1988. That's all from me, Imran Ruben, anytime, anywhere.